I am Scott Patterson, Vice President of Technical Support for the Farm Bio Business at ILC Dover. I'll be your presenter today. I'll be introducing the Dover Pack. This technology is for handling highly potent, active pharmaceutical ingredients in transfers in the pharmaceutical process. We'll focus on several benefits that are realized when using Dover Pack, Dover Pack technology, but two key benefits are that there, there are superior powder flow properties and zero cleaning based on single-use technology concepts. In this presentation, the content will include Dover Pack technology summary. This is a containment system that does more than just transfer powders. It's high containment capable and proven performance. And with that, we'll show a data set from containment performance using the SMEPAC protocol. Again, from the introductory slide, we have the superior powder flow and zero cleaning. The superior powder flow comes from a mass flow concept and the flexible wall concept. Zero cleaning is really leveraging the single use technology of the Dover pack. And some information of the time and cost savings when comparing the Dover Pack, Dover Pack technology to IBC and split butterfly valve technology. A few workflow examples that are very common in pharmaceutical processing, and then a quick summary of our webinar today. So in the Dover Pack technology, contain, this is a containment system that does a lot more than transfer powders. Dover Pack was purpose designed for use in handling pharmaceutical products and not a common super sack or big bag that might have been adjusted to use in pharmaceutical applications. We go back to circa 1996 where pharma manufacturers were developing more potent drug compounds and came to ILC Dover looking for a better solution to get better containment and also to deal with some cost control issues due to the high cost of durable stainless steel containment devices. Some of the requirements that we are faced with included to contain to less than one microgram per cubic meter. Again, this was circa 1996, and that was the gold standard to reach less than one microgram per cubic meter. The Dover pack would have to handle dry powders and wet cake. It would have to deal with blockbuster drug batch sizes and handle large batch sizes greater than 5,000 kilograms. A problem that needed to be solved was inline contained sampling. The idea was let's not break containment just to take a sample. How do we do that inline and keep contained? Now, dealing with a single use technology, looking at the solvent and static issues that, that occur, and having a film that was resistant to both solvent and static. That film also had to be FDA compliant as well as compliant to other global standards. And a big part of this was to, that, that there, would no, there would be no cleaning required and leverage a single use uh, technology concept with the Dover Pack. And the goal here was to be able to have high containment and not have these issues with powder that was visible, the powder party, and move to a contained system using the Dover Pack and more of a CGMP process. So how does this Dover Pack technology work? Well, the Dover Pack is really a simple process of connecting clamping, opening and using the Dover pack, then sealing the Dover pack and disconnecting. This process repeats the same steps over and over again. It becomes very easy to use for operators getting used to the same operations, one, two, three, four, over and over again. Well, the, the technology starts with the picture on the left is the patented O-ring canister, which is connected to the process via tri-clamp connection. This is a stainless steel reusable device. Next, we have the picture of the Dover pack positioned in the fill position, and that is connected to the O-ring canister using an integral O-ring and easy to use clamps to lock and seal it. Once it's filled, the seal and separate process is performed, and now we can move it to the next operation. So that's after filling, the Dover pack will move to the next process for discharging and connect to another O-ring canister. Again, the same exact process where the fill process is done for the discharge process. Once that's complete, we do have a process that was developed to be able to change multiple Dover packs. 
Here, after the seal and separate process, there is a stub end. The next overpack is connected and the stub end is removed through a bag out process. Again, that process is the same process over and over, so it's a repeatable process. More about the Dover Pack technology and the construction. So really, it's a uh, construction of an armor flex liner inside is installed to a conductive polypropylene restraint outside. The armor flex is high strength, static dissipative, and solvent resistant to meet all of those requirements in pharmaceutical processing. Again, the armor flex meets global product contact standards and has successfully passed stability trials for hundreds and maybe really thousands of molecules. Uh, over the past 25 years, every big pharma company has used this to process molecules to see for stability. This, uh, this assembly, this construction, is also a UNDOT certified for global transportation. It goes through a very rigorous drop test to make sure that if dropped from the controlled height, that there's no failure of the system. It is also a type C FIBC certified when using the ArmorFlex 110 film. Again, one of the big issues in 1996 to solve was sampling in line. So the Dover Pack solved that problem by including a sleeve for inline high containment sampling. Now samples can be taken at the beginning of the process, middle of the process, at the end of the process, whenever the SOP requires. There's no operator exposure and the sample is tamper-proof when taken to the quality area. The Dover Pack, as a one, main, one of the main criteria, was it, it, it needs to be high containment capable. And so starting with that, we have a design philosophy and criteria. And the main design philosophy is contain at the source. Don't let the powder escape from the process. This is very key. If we keep the powder in the process, then we've created the right containment opportunity for high containment performance. So that means don't use localized exhaust ventilation type systems, which really just move the risk to another location. Typically, that's the dust collector system, which then potent powders are in the dust collector and have to be removed there. Here, we want to contain at the source, keep it in the process. And then we need a reliable seal to separate the Dover Pack system to attach multiple units. The crimp lock system was developed as our sealing process, and that then allows for the stub removal process to use multiple Dover Packs. Again, the process must remain closed, and the sealing and stub removal process allows that. The Dover Pack is sealed from any dust leakage for operator protection environmental protection, meaning the room, suite, process area, and then for the disposal process. And the Dover Pack was well thought out, so when being disposed, there's no risk of any operator exposure or contamination. In the design philosophy and criteria, we included quality by design ideas and best practices from design of the Dover Pack to installation. It uses the unique ArmorFlex film and rigorous inspection of the film the manufacturing processes. The processes are computer controlled with a lot of attention paid to computer controlled welding of the Dover Pack system. The last part of it is inflation dwell testing of every Dover Pack to assure its integrity. You can see to the right an inflation dwell test being done at 750 pascals. Every high containment Dover pack goes through this test at 750 pascals and hundreds of thousands of units have passed this test successfully. So going into high containment, there always has to be data. Prove to me that it, is, it, it has achieved these high containment levels. So here's a, a short data set from a comprehensive containment study that was done using the SMEPAC protocol. In this case, the Dover pack was being filled. The lactose or the surrogate in the containment test is, is lactose. And each iteration used 700 liters of powder. And you can see in the data set, we have run one, run two, run three, uh, meeting the criteria set up in the SMEPAC protocol of three iterations. The results are amazing. And the results is less than 30 nanograms per cubic meter airborne concentration. 
We then took that same Dover pack and we did a discharge of the powder. So it's the same exact test with the same exact surrogate, the lactose. And we did three iterations again of the discharge. Again, here we, we, we receive very good results in the 130 nanogram per cubic meter area. Uh, again, this is airborne concentration and it's not an eight hour time weighted average. So really good uh, containment levels when looking at nanograms per cubic meter. So when it's high containment capable, um, in looking at the results of the da data table, we would say that the system could operate to less than 150 nanograms per cubic meter. But there are many factors that go into uh, looking at a high containment system like the Dover pack. Uh, one is the particle size and dustiness of the powder. If our example in our data set was handling wet cake, we'd probably see much higher containment performance and probably well under 50 nanograms or maybe even as low as 20 nanograms per cubic meter. The wet cake doesn't get airborne and it's much easier to contain. Then we might have the example of a micronized powder that is very dry, very small particles, and this results in more containment risk. That could give us a higher risk and in, in less performance on the containment. An another factor that deals with um, the overall containment is the number of Dover packs transferred and the volume when considering and evaluating the containment performance. In general, we would say that the Dover pack will always provide less than one half of a microgram or 500 nanograms per cubic meter containment. But part of the design process was that potent powders were getting more common and so a special version of the Dover pack was created. The coax Dover pack, which combines a second neck inside a flexible isolator for additional containment. So we have primary containment and secondary containment here. This coaxial neck Dover pack was developed for high risk processes to assure containment levels that go below 50 nanograms per cubic meter and has also been tested out in SME, in SME pack studies. So we look at the Dover Pack technology and powder flow advantages, and this refers to the opening slide and, and mass flow powder. Uh, here, the Dover Pack, the fill neck or the inlet neck, or the discharge neck, the outlet neck, are either 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter diameter, and there's no valve blocking that, that, that is typical when having a butterfly valve or a split butterfly valve. So we have a a wide open diameter to allow for mass powder flow. And this is excellent when we have very poor flowing powders and even that wet cake that we referred to before and we need to get that in or out of the Dover pack. So we have this mass powder flow capability because of the wide open neck to allow those products to flow. But the entire flexible technology that the Dover pack uses has some great advantages when it comes to powder flow and getting powder into and out of a Dover pack. The operator can feel the Dover pack flexible wall to assure when all powder has been discharged. And in fact, at the neck area, the operator can see if the powder has been discharged 100%. Powder that does not flow well is easily assisted by the operator by manually shaking that flexible wall, uh, shaking it out to let the the residual powder fall down, or an automatic system can be used uh, to, to assist the operator to make sure that the Dover pack is discharged 100%. These flow advantages result in less product loss or product retention in the transfer. Using a stainless steel IBCs shows a common risk of leaving up to kilos of powder or product in the IBC, causing batch shrinkage and lost production yield. With the stainless steel IBC, it's almost impossible to look into the IBC to see if there's residual powder, and there can be hang up as it goes through the valve with the valve wafer in the, the, the flow area. The Dover pack has been tested to have less than 0.05% powder retention after, after discharge. And the Dover pack is a ready to use and quick disposal process. And this goes to uh, the zero cleaning concept. Well, first of all, we start off with 
the Dover pack is just purchased when needed. It comes in and packaged correctly for short-term storage or even up to five-year shelf life. Once the process starts, the Dover pack is taken from the stores area and used to fill and discharge, but this is done when needed. There's really no uh, floor space that's needed to store these Dover packs uh, when they're not being used. Then after discharge, the high containment crimp is applied and the Dover pack is ready for disposal. And so this is the zero cleaning process that the, the Dover pack itself is going to be disposed of to eliminate all of the cleaning associated with other types of hard wall technologies. So the Dover pack creates a very small amount of plastic waste that has to be handled. And in, in, in some discussions, the, the roughly five kilograms, and that's really a maximum amount of weight of a Dover pack, the five kilograms is seen to be a, a, a large amount of plastic waste. But then we look at the comparison uh, to the cost of rinse water and chemicals for cleaning the IBC technology, and that is typically over 500 liters of water and chemicals, which that weighs about 500 kilograms. So we have the 500 kilograms of waste. Oftentimes that waste has to be incinerated. So first of all, we have to generate WFI to do the rinse and the cleaning. And then we have to capture that after rinsing the IBC and split butterfly valve. Then it has to be transported typically for incineration. Um, and then we have the incineration cost to literally burn this water or liquid or 500 kilos of this. And again, these are estimates to do a comparison, but comparing a Dover pack in a small amount, five kilos, very easy to transport, uh, very easy to incinerate many of these Dover packs together in a drum versus the amount of volume and waste that's created with water and chemicals when having to do cleaning. And then there's the last factor with an IBC and drying the IBC and the energy used to do that. So we look at the entire cost equation around using stainless steel technology uh, of a stainless steel IBC, which by itself will not provide a high containment transfer. So a split butterfly, a split butterfly valve needs to be added. Now with that, now we have the stainless steel IBC, the split butterfly valve technology, but the split butterfly valve needs precision docking. And now we need a post lift, which is a fixed asset and a very expensive fixed asset, followed by another fixed asset, which is the bin washer. So after discharging, the bin needs to be cleaned. So that goes off to that process. So all of this equation equals up to a really high capital cost of the stainless steel bins, the butterfly valves, the post lifts, the bin washers. So we have a, a very high capital cost and usually then we have an extended go-to-market time to be able to deploy these technologies in place. These are fixed assets that take up valuable floor space. They need regular maintenance and those costs are both in labor and parts. There's more labor needed to develop cleaning validation SOPs and more labor and cost to execute those SOPs. The cleaning cost as referred to in the last example includes all of the rinse water, the chemicals, the disposal and incineration of materials, utilities and labor. But as we look at all of these combined, the real cost issue is lost production time when cleaning and validating these stainless steel devices. Oftentimes these are processes that take days, including hold times for the bins or the split butterfly valves to assure the validation of the cleaning. And that's lost production time, which is not realized when using the Dover pack technology, since right after the last Dover pack is used and disposed of, the process is ready for even a completely different uh, drug product to be processed. So a lot of uh, production uptime can be won by using the Dover pack technology. Now we'll just look at a couple of workflows um, in the typical pharmaceutical process area. And this workflow is in the chemical synthesis area where this is where the active pharmaceutical ingredient process strain sits. And that process strain is typically reactors, uh, centrifuges, and dryers. And this is a very common place for the Dover pack to be used throughout the process strain. Uh, we start with non-potent ingredients. Uh, these might be intermediates, but non-potent chemicals, raw materials coming into the process. 
And as we come out of the process, it'll be a potent final API for drug substance. So all along the value chain here, we can use the Dover pack from uh, a centrifuge discharge, particularly if that is a peeler type of centrifuge or an inverted centrifuge, going into charging into some type of dryer, filter dryer or conical dryer or something like that. But oftentimes from the centrifuge, we need to go back to the reactor for, for more chemistry to be done. There is a great way to use the Dover pack to have a closed reactor charge to assure that there's no contamination that goes into the reactor. So here along this process train, the Dover pack can be a very valuable tool to handle the, the powders, the wet cake, and the final API product, all in high containment. And here's another example of a workflow uh, or position in the workflow, and this is conical milling. And this could be in the chemical synthesis process as the very last step before the API leaves the facility, or it could be in an oral solid dosage process as part of the work being done there. Powders were packed, in this example, powders were packed into drums and need to be milled or maybe just delumped in the conical mill. So a flexible isolator is used to contain the powder from the drum to manually feed into the conical mill, and this is done under high containment. So this is another single-use technology that ILC Dover has introduced into the pharmaceutical market, is to use flexible isolators as single-use products for high containment. After it goes through the conical mill, the powder is packed off into the Dover pack, um, and here's where we have high containment. In these applications, there have been many SME pack studies done, and the containment levels going through a conical mill uh, the type of like a Quadro U10 or a Quadro U20 is quite excellent and the containment performance is typically less than 50 nanograms per cubic meter airborne concentration. So in summary, the Dover pack is built for purpose for the pharma market as a containment system and does a lot more than just any old big bag. It does provide high containment during the powder transfers and that containment level reaches the nanogram level. The large open neck of the Dover pack, both inlet and outlet, along with the flexible wall allow for mass powder flow and complete discharge with little or no retention. This is very valuable to recover all the material in the process and not to have batch shrinkage. The Dover pack is a use-as-you-go solution that has significantly lower capex costs versus other solution and reduces the need for a lot of fixed assets which take a valuable floor space in a pharmaceutical facility. When compared to IBC and split butterfly valve technology, uh, cleaning is eliminated. This is the zero cleaning concept, having a tremendous cost reduction, but most importantly, allowing for more production time, reducing, eliminating the time for cleaning, cleaning hold times for validation, can create more efficient production time. And the Dover pack can be used across the pharma workflows in chemical synthesis and all types of oral solid dosage processes. Thank you for spending the time with us uh, today. You can visit our website at www.ilcdover.com and there is a contact form where you can submit any questions and inquiries and we'll respond to you as quickly as possible. Thank you very much.